behind you. And he told Obey Ibn Al-Kab, you read for as long as you want to read, and the people who want to read a long time, they'll stand behind you. In that narration, they said that Ubay ibn Al-Kab used to lead the people in the Salat, and he would not finish the Taraweeh prayer except close to Salat al-Fajr. And the people used to hold on to sticks while they were praying. Why? Because they were making things difficult for themselves. Because they knew the Sunnah. Tul al qiyam the long standing in the Salah. During the time of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to lead the people in the Salah, or he used to make the Salah. When he was sick, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran Al-Ma'idah, Surah Al-Nisa, he prayed with, Surah Al-A'raf, Al-An'an, and Surah Al-Tawbah. Those seven surahs in one qiyam. Anybody know how many ayahs that is? Somebody take a guess. How many ayahs are those seven ayahs? The Prophet said whoever reads these seven ayahs or memorize them is a hibber from the ummah. Does anyone know how many ayahs those seven consist of? Over 1,000 ayahs in qiyam. And his ruqur will be similar to that. And then he will stand in Qiyam again, it will be similar to that. He will go into Sajda, it will be similar to that. So if an individual compare what we're doing behind the Imam, it's relatively easy. Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiallahu anhu, he said that I prayed Qiyam al with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he prayed, he started off and he read Surah al-Baqarah in the first Qiyam. Hudayfa said, when he came to the end of Baqarah, I said, is going to make ruku after this. Prophet didn't make ruku. He started to read Surah Ali Imran. He came to the end of Ali Imran. Uzaifa said he's going to stop after this. He didn't stop after Ali Imran. He went to Al Ma'ida. He read the end of Ma'ida. He said he's going to finish after this. He didn't finish. He went back to Al Nisa. Uzaifa said, and then I began to think of a terrible thing. I started to think of something that was so. I started to think to myself something that was negative. The negative thing that he said he was thinking about was to sit down while the Prophet was praying. He didn't say I was going to leave the Salat. He didn't say I was going to nudge the Prophet, stop, slow down. He said the negative thing that I was going to think about doing was to sit down and to pray while he stood up and I sat down. I sat down. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa radiallahu anhu ajma'in. So that's why the point here is, where are we? No one, Allah Azza wa Jalla, in the ayat of fasting, He mentioned in those ayat, "Yuridu Allahu bikum al yusr, wa la yuridu bikum al usr." Allah wants to make things easy for you in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. In the whole deen, it's easy. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. So He didn't ask us. He didn't command us. He didn't make it wajib upon us to make qiyam al layl, taraweeh, or other than that. But when a person compares the recitation of our Iman with the recitation of what the companions were upon, then we see that Mulani is really not all that difficult for the most part, if the person looks at it relatively speaking. Now the question is, why were the companions able to stand so long? And why is it so difficult for us to stand the short time that we have to stand? There are many reasons, many reasons. One of those reasons is the understanding of the companions as it relates to the language of the Arabs. When they used to listen to the Quran, any person who knows the Arabic language and he has an appreciation for it, he's amazed by the different aspects of the Quran. How Allah Ta'ala speaks about something that's going to happen in the future, but he speaks about it in the past tense. The history, the words, the, pro, the pronouns, the syntax of the sentence, the kalam of Allah. The person listened to it. He knew the language. He'll appreciate it. The companions, they were capable of doing that. Another reason that the companions were able to stand that long is because when they listened to the Quran, obviously the Quran was revealed because of them. They will listen to the ayat of the Quran and the stories and the different ahkam that came and they said, 
That ayat was revealed because of me. Those ayats were revealed because of my relative. I was there when this ayat was revealed. And they never became tired of the ayat. Whereas the Muslims today, we don't read the Quran. Or when we do read the Quran, we read the same thing over and over and over. All he reads is Surah Al Yasin. He just reads Yasin. He reads Ar Rahman. He just reads that and that. And that's good. No one is putting that down. But because we don't know the Quran, the Muslims have now embraced a number of twisted ideas, shallow ideas, superstitions, issues that the Quran easily pushed away these ideas only if we had exposed ourselves to all of the Book of Allah Ta'ala, we'd have known these things are not acceptable in the religion. How can a person believe that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is omnipotent? How their nazir, or they say hazir nazir, is everywhere simultaneously. When I became a Muslim, the masjid that I went to, I went into a masjid and they had two chairs. A chair next to the right side of the member, the other chair next to the left side of the member. And I knew that the one chair was for the imam. He used to sit on the chair and used to give the class. I asked the people after a few days, what's the second chair for? Why is it there? And he said, every time there's a khutbah or a dars, the Prophet comes and he sits in that chair. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I said, is that just in this masjid? They said, no, wherever there's a dars in the world. If a person read the Quran and know that that type of concept, hazir nazir, as it is said in this country, omnipotent. He knows that this is something that is not possible, had he read the Quran. But if he only reads the same ayat, the same surah over and over, and neglects all of what remains of the Book of Allah, then it's going to be problematic. Lastly, as it relates to the companion's ability, رضي الله عنه أجمعين, why were they able to stand up in the salah for such a long time, in addition to their knowledge of the language, in addition to the fact that the Quran was revealed on them and because of them? Another reason is because of the level of taqwa that they had. They were not ordinary human beings. We're ordinary people. They were divinely chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the companions of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the person who comes after them, no matter who he is, whoever you can think of that came after the companions in other Islam, the Mahdi, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Uwais al-Qadani, Hassan al-Basri, Bukhari imam al-Bukhari imam muslim Abu Hanifa, Anyone who you can think of that came after the companions, that companion who came into the masjid, Rabbi Allah, and he